Hello there. Welcome to Just the Discs. We talk about Blu-rays here. My name's Brian. And today we are going to talk a little bit about Sidney Lumet, one of the great American filmmakers and uh, a gentleman who is pretty well represented on Blu-ray, thankfully. And now we're getting to see him get some representation on 4K as well. So today I'm going to talk about a couple of the recent Kino Lorber 4K releases of Sidney Lumet films. We'll start with what is kind of his feature debut, although he had done some features before this, some films before this, um, in 12 Angry Men from 1956, 57, excuse me. Um, he had done, you know, Crime in the Streets and... Uh, some some TV stuff before this, but this is kind of really the big one for him, and it is truly spectacular in terms of what it delivers, and the performances and the cast is just absolutely stunning. Um, for those who don't know, it is basically the story of a jury room uh post the trial a murder trial where a young man is accused of murdering his father and there is a lot of evidence that we have not been privy to we are catching this story as the jurors enter the jury room to deliberate and there are 12 of them uh, 12 white men uh deciding this case and they initially are almost all seemingly unanimously thinking the kid is guilty. He is a minority 18-year-old kid, and there are clearly pretty early on some indications of prejudices that are starting to creep out from certain characters. Uh, and it is interesting to see how those manifest themselves and how they play out. Uh, throughout the course of the movie. And again, getting back to this cast, which is just ridiculous, um, we have, um, they're all sort of n numbered. So like juror number one, Martin Balsam, great character. Almost all these guys are just great character actors that you know. Uh, Balsam is sort of running the show. He is the foreman. So he's sort of organizing the discussion uh, as they go around the room. Um, John Fiedler, juror number two, he is a sort of a nerdy guy. You'd know him as like the voice of, I think, um, Piglet or something like that. Like he's he's done some cartoon voices, but he definitely stands out um, as a guy you recognize. Uh, basically, the second lead of the movie, juror number three, is Lee J. Cobb, and he is uh, a guy who runs a. Uh, messenger service I think but definitely has his own issues that and then you find out sort of fall in line with this case and he's one of the guys that is like this kid did it I know he did it uh followed by him juror number four is E.G. Marshall uh stockbroker I think uh very you know buttoned down by the facts kind of guy next to him is juror number five Jack Klugman uh, really great, again, character actor, younger in this performance, and he has some sympathies that start to come out uh, as the thing plays out. Edward Binns is juror number six. Jack Warden, juror number seven, uh, who's a guy who also just seems like he wants to get to a ball game and doesn't really want to be bothered to solve this, and this kid's life is inconsequential at the beginning of the film as far as he's concerned. Uh, Henry Fonda, the basically the center of the movie, juror number eight, He's the one who, at the beginning of the case, says, I don't think he's guilty, or at least I'm not willing to say guilty and ha send this kid to death without talking about it first. Um, next to him is an older man, Joseph Sweeney. Uh, that's juror number nine. Juror number 10, Ed Bagley, senior. Uh, definitely has some prejudices that come out throughout the course of the movie. Uh, George uh, Voskovec is juror number... Uh, let's see here, eleven. I'm, I'm, I'm. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And Robert Weber is number twelve. 
and he's an ad guy. And so it's fascinating to watch as these gentlemen discuss what they heard in the case and we start to hear the you know key pieces of evidence and they start to dissect them a little bit and it is certainly partially uh the you know Fonda character who is you know pushing forward this idea of well wait a minute let's let's actually talk about what we saw and what we heard and so it's really great to see as the tide slowly shifts uh, towards the 11 to 1 vote away from that. And I'm not going to talk about where it goes exactly, but but it's neat to see them discuss it and talk about the evidence and talk about what they really saw and have a bunch of revelations. So it's this really kind of incredible, compact, single room thriller that just continues to sort of build its tension as it goes and it's night like 95 minutes it's based on uh, a teleplay that was part of um i want to say CBS hour long you know things that they would do like live um you know plays that they would do on TV uh, that uh, apparently Henry Fonda saw and that he was so taken with that he took up the reins of you know seeing about getting the material made into a film and so he's one of the producers on the film, and he, I think, you know, saw Sidney Lumet as the guy who could do it. And Lumet does a great job with this. Uh, there's really not a lot of ways to shoot this scene, but he keep, keeps it interesting throughout, you know, inside, inside of this jury room. There's one jury room and then a bathroom, and so they use that a little bit. But it's really about these men's faces and what they're saying and trying to figure them all out, you know, what what is their deal, what is their stake in this, what's really going on here, um, but it's really something, and a movie that I have loved for a long time, I remember doing a reading of this in class in like middle school maybe, and I got to be, not knowing the movie at all, I got to be juror number eight, and I think it was really that much more captivating for me to play the Henry Fonda character more or less, or at least read his lines. Um, and it's always stuck with me as something that um, really had an impact. You know, it's really something you, you think about, about the justice system and prejudices and just the way that people think about things and how their personal biases come into play. And it's really a great movie. And, and just like I said, a, a real jumping off point for Lumet, who would go on to make tons of great films, another one of which I'll talk about in a second, but, you know, he would go on to do, even before his run of 70s stuff, he does, you know, The Fugitive Kind, he does Failsafe, he does The Hill, he does The Group, I really am a big fan of The Group, that's also on Aquino Blu-ray, um, he does The Offense, uh, The Anderson Tapes, a couple with Sean Connery, he does Murder on the Orient Express, Dog Day Afternoon, Network, you know, Prince of the City, Death Trap, The Verdict. I mean, these are really great, great movies. Running on Empty, I'm a huge fan of that one as well. Uh, and the list goes on and on. Um, but he's a filmmaker that I think is truly one of the one of the best, you know. Uh, his book, Making Movies, is really great. I want to say I have that handy somewhere here. But anyway... Uh, so this Blu-ray, uh, 4K, from Kino, um, has a number of special features. Um, one of the big ones on the second disc, this has the 4K and then a special features Blu-ray. Now, on the special features Blu-ray, normally you'd think, oh, I'm getting the movie again on the Blu-ray. Well, in this case, one of the features is William Friedkin's 1997 TV movie version of 12 Angry Men, which is also um, an incredible, you know, cast, including, you know, Jack Lemmon in the Henry Fonda role, George C. Scott in the Lee J. Cobb role. It's, it's a really great cast. I highly recommend checking out the uh, remake, which is this, uh, this is on the second disc. So instead of getting 12 Angry Men again on the Blu-ray, you only get it on the 4K and you get a commentary track. 
Um, and the commentary is with, um, well, we have a couple here. We have film historian screenwriter Gary Girani and film historian Drew Casper. So you get two commentary tracks. Um, both of them are on the 4K. But then the other features, including that William Friedkin film, is on the Blu-ray. And then you get Beyond, um, what is it called? It's called um, Beyond a Reasonable Doubt, The Making of 12 Angry Men. It's a 23-minute uh, featurette that includes interviews with Jack Klugman, Sidney Lumet, Robert Osborne, Richard Thomas, and George Went, who were both part of a touring company in 2006 of the uh, play, um, and also a couple of their film historians. Um, yeah, and just going through how the film came to be, you know, Jack Klugman, Klugman's memories of working with the different actors. They basically go through every, um, all, all the jurors. Like they talk about each one, who the actor was and what the character is. So you really get a rundown of everything. And it's, it's really well done. 23 minutes. Um, then we have inside the jury room, which is a 15 and a half minute, uh, featurette that has um, Jamie Floyd from Court TV, Michael Asimov, professor of law at UCLA and writer of the book Real Justice, uh, Gloria Allred, uh, an attorney and author, Robert Shapiro, attorney and author, and Michael Cabo, a uh, trial consultant. So these are all real lawyers uh, and legal folks talking about the legal process of um, jury selection and trials and what the prosecution would want in jurors and how it relates to the film so that's fascinating stuff too um and uh i think that's it for this one um but you get between those two commentaries and the like you know 40 some minutes of features it's pretty solid and this is a brand new hdr dolby vision master from a 4k scan of the original camera negative so it looks really solid black and white uh, HDR looks great and the detail is incredible and yeah I was really knocked out by it I thought it looked wonderful so a great new upgrade of a real classic 12 Angry Men from the Met and of course the other one that I didn't mention before is Serpico another one of Lumet's big big movies and uh, this is from 1973 it is uh a big one for Al Pacino. Obviously, he had done The Godfather. He had done things before this. But in terms of The Godfather, this is kind of one of the big follow-ups that he had. And, of course, he would go on to do Dog Day Afternoon in 75 with um, Lumet, another one of his greatest performances. But this is really one that stands out. And it, um, it's about a cop in New York in the early 70s based on a real guy who is named Frank Serpico. He's a kind of a blue collar Italian guy who has grown up, always wanting to be a police officer. We open with him um, in a really interesting, stylish way. You know, black and white credits, very simple. We hear a siren. Then we see him in the car. It looks that he's he's been shot in the face and he's being driven by a cop to the hospital. He's breathing heavy, his eyes are open, he doesn't appear to be dead, but we don't know what happened or you know, how he'll survive this. Um, and it reminded me that it's very much like the opening of Carlito's Way in terms of you have Pacino, uh, mortally wounded potentially, and in the case of Carlito's Way, he's got a voiceover and he actually starts to flash back, but this does the same thing. It flashes back from that opening, uh, you know, incident. And we see him graduating from the police academy and we see him basically coming. It's like a slingshot narrative is what I call it, where it goes back and comes back to the point that, you know, you saw him at the uh, beginning. So we see him coming out of the police academy, all very um, optimistic and idealistic. And slowly, as he works his way through being a patrolman, in the New York City Police Department, he starts to recognize there's a lot of corruption happening, a lot of cops taking payoffs, whether it's just a free meal from a delicatessen to, uh, in exchange, allow them to double park for deliveries and not ticket them, 
starting in that place and then moving on to straight up payoffs from gambling institutions in the city to cops and full precincts to allow them to continue to operate and leave them alone. And Pacino's character Serpico and the real guy was against the idea of corruption. You know, he wanted to just be a cop doing his job without these outside influences. He doesn't want to take money and he starts to alienate himself from the rest of the department as he goes, as a lot of the rest of the cops are taking money and they don't trust anybody who doesn't. And so police corruption is definitely something that Lumet is, um, I mean, I think he seems to find it a topic of very important discussion in that he would go on to do Prince of the City, which is revisiting a lot of the same themes as this, again, also based on a true incident and a true uh, gentleman. And, you know, this guy is having to eventually try to find people that he can talk to about this, uh, you know, and, and figure out if there's something can be done, you know. And it becomes clear that maybe this kind of corruption goes higher than he would expect it to. And that for that reason, it's maybe going to be a very difficult thing to root out and get rid of, but it takes him a long time to figure this out. And the more he does this, the more rumors get around that he's, you know, not looking out for other cops. He's potentially endangering other cops that are corrupt and it only serves to make him more of a target for the cops and his different divisions. He gets transferred several times and each time he runs into more problems. Um, so it is a really interesting and compelling story of a guy who just will not allow himself to be bought and sticks by his principles to whatever end might come to him. And, and it's clear that something bad has happened at the beginning of the movie and we come to find out what that was about by the end. Um, but it's a really great performance by Pacino. Uh, he becomes an undercover cop, and so there's a lot of great outfits that he wears, and I would say that his hats are one of the fun things about this movie. Different hats, you know, mustache. He just really has made himself look like... He, he comes off as kind of a hippie, beatnik type anyway, but he definitely dresses that part and is able to get undercover in that way too. Um, but yeah, really, really great story and a movie that I hadn't seen in a long time. A transfer also is a new um, HDR Dolby Vision master from a 4K scan of the original camera negative. And um, it is it is a good-looking transfer. This has um, got a lot of detail and good color to it. There's some darkness there, definitely, uh, in terms of the... The movie has a lot of interiors that are dark, nighttime shots... Uh, but it, it all looks good to me. Like this is a really solid 4k upgrade from the last version I saw in HD. So I think this does look very nice. Um, and it has a bunch of features as well. Um, as with the 12 angry men, only the commentary is present on the 4k. And then we have in this case, uh, a Blu-ray, which does have the Serpico feature and the commentary as well. Um, but okay, let's talk about this disc and its features. So we have the commentary and that is with um, film historians Howard S. Berger, Steve Mitchell, and Nathaniel Thompson. And then we have um, the uh, several featurettes. There's Sidney Lumet, cineast New York, 30 minutes, and that's Lumet himself uh, talking about shooting in New York City, what he likes about it, how it can be mostly can be functional for most any story except maybe a period piece. Um, and it's a really great interview. This stuff, these featurettes seem to be ported from some DVD release. They are Studio Canal produced. I think they're only in SD. Uh, just a heads up, I think that's what my player was showing me. Um, so this one is great. Just a 30-minute chat with uh, Sidney Lumet, one of the great New York filmmakers talking about shooting in New York. Then we have Looking for Al Pacino, which is a 30-minute um, featurette. And this one 
has uh, Jack J. Cambrian, a commanding officer from the New York Police Department, talking about the real Serpico and his exploits and relating them to Pacino's performance. Also interviewed here are director Jerry Schatzberg, who worked with Pacino twice uh, in two movies, Panic in Needle Park and Scarecrow. Both are great, especially Scarecrow. Um, and Michael Radford, who is also a director who worked with him on the, uh, Pacino on The Merchant of, Merchant of Venice. So both talk about Lumet's abilities with actors and Pacino's approach to acting, the influence of the actor's studio, and so forth. They both have insights as to Pacino and his process. And so you get a sense of that from those interviews, which is cool. And then uh, we have Serpico from Real, R-E-A-L to R-E-E-L, uh, Real to Real. Uh, and this 10 minutes is an interview with producer Martin Bregman. And he talks about how Serpico came together, difficulties of getting uh, it financed as the studios were seeing the police you know, movie cycle starting to die off. I think like 17 in a row had been made or something and now it was time to maybe move on. And this is a different kind of cop movie. It's not action oriented. There are a few bursts of violence shootouts, but it's really much more dramatic and and it's about this guy trying to hunt down corruption within the police force. So it's a totally different kind of cop movie and thus was harder to get made despite its, you know, real uh, roots in reality. Uh, but fascinating to hear him talk about that stuff. There's then Inside Serpico, which is a 13-minute um, kind of making of again. It's just a talk with Sidney Lumet, same interview, I think, as before, but maybe different bites, where he just talks about the making of the film, specific scenes, how they were shot, etc. All good stuff. I love hearing Sidney Lumet talk about his movies. Um, then we have Serpico Favorite Moments. This is about three minutes, and it's just producer Martin Bregman and Sidney Lumet talking about their favorite scenes in the film, and we kind of see those scenes play out with like a little bit of commentary uh, from both guys uh, about those scenes. And um, so anyway, that's fun. And then we have a cool photo gallery. Now, usually I'm not into this stuff, but this one has a commentary with Sidney Lumet that's about, it's about four and a half minutes, and it is more talk of how he made Serpico, and in this case he's focusing a lot on the music and how little he used in the movie. He's talking about scoring the film, but it's just over lobby cards from the movie and stuff like that, and so that's pretty cool as well, and um, a nice little closer. Again, a lot of features on this disc, again, they aren't all uh, 4K, but or you know, or HD, but regardless, you're getting a lot of great stuff here from uh, Lumet and a lot of him being involved. And obviously, he's no longer with us, so it's great to have his comments on what is you know looking like the definitive edition of Serpico uh, moving forward. So yeah, really great release from Kino, and I love that you know they do this sometimes where they'll put out a couple from one director. So you have one in 12 Angry Men where he's just getting started and really showing his chops and what he's going to do. And then Serpico, which is one of the sort of stone cold classics uh, of his career that you get to see. Um, you get to see him working with a great ensemble cast here. And he's doing that in Serpico. You have um, some good supporting folks in there uh, as well. But it's really about the Pacino performance. So you have ensemble versus you know, one great performance, great, both good New York movies, despite 12 Angry Men being just in a jury room, it still, still feels like a New York movie. The characters feel like New York characters. And the same thing goes for Serpico, incredibly New York. And uh, just great examples of good filmmaking from one of the um, true legend directors in Sydney Met. So two 4K recommendations from Kino Lorber. Uh, I want to say thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.